What are the expectations in Fayetteville this year after a disappointing 4-8 and eight regression campaign for Sam Pittman and company? John Neighbors of Locked On Arkansas. Woo, Pig Suey joining me here on Locked On College Football. Let's start there. John will progress to the spring game, which is this Saturday for the Hogs. But a lot of, lot of buzz on Arkansas basketball right now, hiring John Calipari. But football trudges on, which is a word that I definitely just made up. Right now, before the spring game, and as spring football has been going along, what are the expectations in Fayetteville? Well, I think the expectations are just to make progress from last year and to make the postseason. Uh, I know that it's kind of a weird thing to say, hey, just get to 6-6 and and it'll be fine. I don't think that's maybe necessarily the case to look at it that simplistic, but... You know, there were no doubt that last year was a bad. It was a bad year. I mean, you went four and eight, and with Sam Pittman, who's kind of entering into a year where it's do or die, he, he's gone from having nine wins to seven wins to four wins. And there's not many coaches that keep their job. But the one thing that's been the saving grace for him has been the hiring of Bobby Petrino as the offense coordinator, which is something I never would have guessed in a million years I'd ever see. And I'm excited <laughs> for it. I'm a huge Petrino fan. I've always have been. But to see him back into the mix and back into the conversation uh, as OC and he has full reign. I think that's what's given Razorback fans a little bit of optimism and hope because their offense was abysmal last year. Uh, new quarterback in Taylor Green, new uh, running backs, uh, been able to add some new offensive linemen. It's been really big. So I think the schedule is always going to be tough, but if Arkansas can just make tremendous strides and get to that six, seven, even eight win mark, everyone's going to be pretty pumped and pretty excited. But uh, there's de- you definitely cannot have a year like you had last year in the a lot of the failures that came along with it. Yeah, FanDuel has their win total at five and a half right now. Going over would, would hit that threshold you mentioned of getting them to a bowl game. It, it's not an impossible schedule, but let's not say it's one of the easier ones in, in the SEC either. I think it's somewhere in between. Now, you don't have an Alabama on that schedule. You don't have a Georgia on on the schedule, but you do have to go at Auburn. You go at Oklahoma State in the Big 12 in the non-conference slate, which is always a a tough place to play and a good program. You have to play Ole Miss and Texas at Missouri the last week of the year. So there there are definitely some tough matchups out there for Arkansas, but I think whether or not they, you know, hit that six-win threshold will depend very heavily on what they get out of the quarterback position because K.J. Jefferson has been the guy the last couple of years. He's now at UCF because that's how the quarterback Mm -hmm. carousel works. We talk a lot about the coaching carousel here. Don't forget about that second carousel uh, as well. But Taylor Green comes in from Boise State. Frankly, I was a little surprised at at the move because I think it was a move that made me think that feels like K.J. Jefferson adjacent. Not super high completion percentage, big guy, big arm, could have some really good potential. Let's start to him, and then we'll talk Bobby Petrino and the OC. What does Taylor Green need to do and maybe showcase this Saturday in the spring game for the Hogs? Well, I think the main thing is he's got to stay healthy because uh, anytime you have a, a guy that comes in as a transfer who's automatically the starter, you've you got to make sure that he always stays upright and stays healthy. But, you know, he, you mentioned it. He, he's six foot six. He's a guy that wasn't incredibly accurate uh, a year ago at Boise State, but uh, there's a reason why Bobby Petrino wanted him. And the fact that he's got not only a big arm and can be really great downfield, but can do a lot of with his legs too, he's just the type of quarterback that Petrino really likes and at least fits the formula. He's got to have a long way to go, and you know this, this offense has got to continue to grow with him and everything. But uh, as far as on the spring game, just – you know, be you're not going to be able to run it around. You're not going to be out there taking hits, but just do the simple things right. You're not going to hit every pass, but don't throw a don't throw a bad pass that ends up in an interception. Don't don't make bad decisions. Just show that at least at this point in time you're you're pro- progressing. You're getting better, and you're cool, calm, and collected, uh, being the starter, the QB one for an SEC program because that's what he is and that's what he's got going for him. So just try to limit the mistakes. You don't have to impress anybody in spring game. Wait for that to actually happen once fall comes around. Bobby Petrino inserted as offensive coordinator. He, he's been around the block a little bit in this, what we call here at Locked On College Football, the greatest sport on uh, planet Earth. Bobby Petrino is, is no stranger to it. How excited should Arkansas fans be and how aware should other SEC schools be and Oklahoma State fans as well about what he brings to that offensive coordinator role? Well, people can say whatever they want about Petrino, and you know, there's no doubt that 
him in his position is, a, is an interesting one. And to see him back at Arkansas, where the last time we saw him was in a neck brace and uh, the whole motorcycle accident and the, and the craziness that came from it. But uh, I don't think that there's ever been an offensive coordinator hire that has been providing more excitement than what Bobby Vitrino has been able to provide at Arkansas. I mean, when Arkansas announced that he was coming back as the OC, Arkansas basketball played against Duke that day in Fayetteville that same day. Bobby was there in the building. Arkansas beat Duke, and they stormed the court and everything. And three times throughout the game, and also while the students were on the court and everyone was on the court, Bobby Chance broke out. Like, nobody's having that happen for an offensive coordinator. It's just not. And that's the saving grace that really helped Pittman and provide excitement because I don't think there's ever been a, a lower level of excitement than what people were feeling after going 4-8 and eight and getting trounced at home and, 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 the, and the feeling. So you had to be able to provide excitement. I think Sam Pittman did that with hiring Petrino, and the greatest thing about the hiring of Petrino and something that Jimbo Fisher didn't do at A&M last year with Bobby as the OC is Pittman's giving him the keys. Pittman's not, he's not trying to call plays. Pittman's not trying to meddle or anything. Pittman says, here you go. Do, do whatever you need to do. And one of the things that when we got to meet with Petrino, I believe last week in the press conference, one of the things that Pittman told him as soon as he got hired says, go find your quarterback. You know, go, go find the guy you want. And he wanted Taylor Green. He's like Taylor Green. He's always enjoyed Taylor Green. He tried to recruit Taylor Green. Like he's just been such a big fan. And because of that fact, like Bobby is such a great offensive mind, one of the greater offensive minds of this modern era of college football. You know, does he still have it to the level that it needs to be? Can it be done at Arkansas? We'll see. But uh, the fact that he's able to not only go out and get his quarterback, but also have positions that opened up where the offensive staff he didn't get to bring in his own guys immediately. But now Arkansas has got a huge turnover there. They have a new offensive line coach in Eric Mateos, but the new wide receiver coach, Fouch, is a guy that Bobby Petrino had at Missouri State and had to Louisville. Same thing with his new running backs coach, Smith. Uh, he, he's a guy that he knows. And so he hired even the position group guys to, to feel good. So overall, the excitement level is really high, and I think that that's what's going to make Arkansas successful this year. they got to stay healthy. I think they got great skill position players. I think they got a great tight end, a phenomenal tight end, all-American all level tight end, and Luke has. The offensive line, they went into the portal and, and got some dudes that – are legitimate and are going to be perennial starters and can really help out. So I just feel like the offensive side and with the Bobby Petrino mindset, there's no reason to believe that this offense can't really make some noise in the SEC and in this first season under Bobby. When you watch the spring game uh, this Saturday, April 13th, what is the biggest question you want to see answered for the Razorbacks? Well, I, you know, the biggest question that's always going to be ongoing is for this team is, is linebacker. Um, they literally lost every one of their linebackers last year, and it wasn't because they all graduated and moved on. Um, they, If they would have had all the linebackers that are still eligible to play in college football back this season, it would be a defense that could really be one of the better ones in the SEC, assuming they improve, because they got a really solid D-line, and the secondary is, is really good. I mean, they lost Dwight McLaughlin from last year, but still return almost all the other starters, and, and they're solid, they're deep, they're experienced. So I like those positions, but uh, Arkansas lost Chris Poupal to the transfer portal. He's at Ole Miss now. He's one of their better linebackers. They lost Jaheim Thomas to Wisconsin. They lost uh, Manny Powell, I believe. Uh, one of them went to – it was either him or another linebacker went to UNLV and, and followed Barry Odom and Michael Schur over there. But the point is, is like they just lost everybody, and the only one they replaced it with was Xavion Sori, who is a five former five-star player from Georgia, but that's it. So the linebacker spot is a huge concern, and they're going to get into the portal with that, but – I just want to see what that looks like, what that continues to develop like, and uh, if that's going to be as bad of a weakness as what it looks to be at this point in time uh, because that could be a very big problem for Arkansas. Well, John Neighbors is overlooking Dixon Street behind him in his office, hoping that it will be filled with passionate Arkansas fans this year, happy after a bevy of wins. Some tough games on the schedule, but we'll check in with John once again after the spring game on Saturday. John Neighbors locked on Arkansas. John, thanks so much. Appreciate it, man. Anytime. Someone is going to surprise you at the bottom of the ACC. It happens in every conference every year. This year might be Stanford.